That's why Jesus died on the tree, upon the cross at Calvary, where Jesus died for me and you. He died for all sinners. The scriptures say he came not for the righteous, but he came for the sinner, that the sinner may repent and turn to the Lord and then walk in the light. That's where the joy comes. As, as our as our brochure, as our, um, our banner sends on our pulpit, once we have come to the Lord, once we have repented, it's just like heaven within. Eh? It's like heaven. It's just, oh, wow. But we've got to follow through. Here we are following through again today. 32 years for me following through. Hell and high water. So today is the 18th of the 8th, 2019 Paradise Now Church Sunday Meet. And um, let's welcome my uh, sister Elisa and brother Byron today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey? Welcome them along to have a feed. And uh, got a few missing today. They might be sleeping in. It would have been a nice day to sleep in today. Hey? And um, so... We can only get rewarded uh, for what we do, can't we? We can't expect... That would be an unrighteous thing to uh, think we're going to get rewarded for something we didn't do. And uh, if you put $10 in the bank, the bank's not going to give you interest on 10000 are they? No. <laughs> Jesus said this. He said, uh, it will be unto you according to your works. And according to your faith. So, you know, whatever you do, uh, the Lord is not indebted to you or me. He will repay you far beyond what you ever did. And therefore, when we all stand at the judgment stand, we will give account and there'll be no blood on his hands. It'll be on our own. Because once we hear the truth, we're accountable. Once we've received the Lord, we are accountable. Let's have a look at what's going on around us today. Jeffrey Epstein, American financial billionaire, friend of Donald Trump and Prince Andrew. These are sex offenders. Hey? Sex offenders. Donald Trump is a sex offender. Donald Trump was groping women, and that's not good. But he's managed to escape. Prince Andrew, he's another groper of young girls. We just got to have these things reminded to us. And they were friends of Jeffrey Epstein. And he was a pervert and a groper too. And a molester. He killed himself, apparently, in his jail cell in New York City. That was the report on Sunday. Moving right along. Australia... It's been said that uh, the latest stats, 40% of Australians earn their wage and spend it on bills. That's the bottom line. You think about it, that's the working poor, isn't it? I prophesied in 2001 that Australia would become a third world country, and here we go. 2001, that's a few moons ago. Can someone say amen? You might want to say am I or why. I'm going to say hallelujah. You know why? Because I'm a pilgrim and I'm a sojourner. I'm passing through. This world is not my home. I don't give a rats what suburb I live in. I don't care what the house is like. It don't bother me at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It don't bother me. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. And everyone said amen, of course. LGBTQRXT, you know... The gay movement has now become a history, curric a history curriculum um, and will now be taught in Illinois schools, state schools. The law was signed in by the governor of Illinois. There you go. They're getting a, a grip here and a grip there. They're gradually... Sodom and Gomorrah, the devil is trying to take over and everyone said amen to that too. So... Uh, Stephen Smith, he goes by the name of Stephen Smith. What a dumb name. And he contacted me to abuse me on uh, 
Facebook. But there's no trace of, of, you know, when you go to his Facebook, it's just got Stephen Smith. There's nothing else there. In other words, it was set up just for the, the miserable comment that he made on me. And uh, see, people like this, they made their comments, but they don't want to face the facts of the truth when someone replies. Not so with our YouTube. There's a thousand messages on our YouTube. But this is not so with this church and this ministry. We're prepared to eyeball face to face anyone, any church, any church leader, any multi-millionaire crook that has a cro cross on their building. I'll face them face to face and they can state their case and I'll state mine. I'm not ashamed of the message I preach. Because what I preach is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And that's why God has helped me for 32 years. Hallelujah. Whether I've preached in Vegas, whether I've preached in New York, wherever I've preached in, in London, wherever I've preached in the Philippines, wherever I've preached in Africa, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Lord, He's the one that helps me. The Lord is the one. Even when I was set on fire by the Muslim in the street, the Lord helped me. He turned it round, Romans 8, 28. All things work to good for them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My Jesus has set me free. Everything and everyone's working for me. Come on, hallelujah. Everything and everyone's working for you. Because that's the word of God. If you've got a Bible, you can open it up at Romans 8. And you can look at verse 28. Brother Shadrach, can you get that spare Bible out of that container there, please? And give it to Sister Elisa. I think I've got that pronunciation right. Yeah, hallelujah. The blue one there. Blue is for holiness. Oh, praise God. And if there's someone there that can sit next to uh, Sister Elisa and just sort of help her along there. Sister Elisa received the Lord this morning and asked the Lord Jesus to forgive her according to Scripture. If you confess with your mouth to salvation uh, and believe in your heart, Brother, uh, Sister Michelle, you might be able to go there and be a little companion there. And if, if you confess with your mouth, hey? That father raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, come on. You confess with your mouth to salvation and you believe in your heart to righteousness. And everyone said, and then you've got to abide, haven't you? And then you can get water baptised. And we plan on doing that, Sister Elisa. We're going to have a special barbecue for you at the beach. And Sister Elisa's going under the water. Hallelujah. And everyone said amen. amen. And I'm going to be there because my wife always does good chicken on the beach job. On the beach run, she does the best chicken you can think of. Hallelujah. And there's a good meal on today too. Oh, the old adubo lamb. Oh, man, a lot. We, we master in natural food and spiritual food. We don't cut corners here. Hallelujah. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Hey, come on, whether it's in the natural or in the spiritual, praise God. So old Stephen Smith, you know, Bill Brown, and I went, I'll get onto this boat and there's nothing there. And I thought, oh, well, there you go. I just deleted it. Hey? Just another cretin with another gospel. Hey? He just says, he said a prayer and he's saved now. He's going to go to heaven. He just sit back and go on and he sin and go on in the darkness and he's going to heaven. It doesn't work that way. It don't work that way. We have to go on. Press, oh, I know. I was the biggest sinner of all. I was drunk eight days a week, drugged out of my brain nine days a week, chain smoker, mouth like a sewer, the most immoral person on the face of the earth. That's what I say. Paul the Apostle said he was the biggest sinner of all. I said, no, he wasn't. I was. And everyone said, amen. So anyone that comes through these doors, they say, oh, I've sinned. Does it? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You ain't seen nothing yet, you know. Who was that? I let back to return overdrive. B -b 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 Baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> anyway, let's move right along into the message today. We're doing a series. It's the Bible benchmarks. We've got to take account of the Bible benchmark. Benchmarks meaning gauges, measurements, standards, and everyone's turn. 
Amen. So, let's open our Bibles at the writings of John. Hang in there, Sister Michelle, with our precious uh, sister, Elisa. Elisa, glory. We're going to John. We're going to John. How perfect is Sister Elisa coming here when we're talking about believers and then we're talking about abiders. I mean, that is just so divine, supernatural. Because Sister Elisa, she came out of the Church of England realm and now, because they're believers, I know they are. I, I know oh, the old rang Harry uh, in the Queen's Church. I know he's a believer, but he ain't a receiver, I can tell you. He ain't born again, the ranger, eh? And Lady Di wasn't born again either. Come on. And Prince Philip's not born again either because he was a pervert with... Epstein and Donald Trump and everyone said, I can't hear you. Come on. I can't hear you. <laughs> Woo! Jesus, son of David. So we're going to be looking at John chapter 8. Last week we read John 8, 31 to 34 or even 31 to 36. But today we're going to read John 8 starting in 37. Now this is a real kick of this one. This is really uh, hair straightening uh, words here. John 8, 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. This is Jesus speaking in the red writing. For those who um, do not uh, know that as yet. Always remember that this preacher, when I came to the Lord, I, I didn't know where to find John in the Bible. So that was 32 years ago. So that's how I know the Lord called me. He, he, he put these words in me. I didn't go to some uh, flaky Bible college. You know what I mean? Even though I've had two honorary reverendships from two different huge churches. One in the Philippines and one in America. Huge. Big. All over the world these churches are. But I got honorary reverendship from them. Too. An honorary reverendship is above someone who studies for five years, white knuckle study, to get a certificate. I just got mine given to me like that. Bang! Just like my, bang, salvation. Just like my ability to preach. Bang! Ability to teach. Bang! Ability to play guitar. Bang! Ability to write songs. Bang! Ability to write poetry. Bang. Given to me. Given to me. And no claim. I have no claim. It's not me. The Lord has anointed me. The Lord has appointed me. The Lord has positioned me. I never wanted to be a pastor. I would rather be a biker. <laughs> I didn't want to be. I rode bikes for 18 years. But that's the way when the Lord calls you answer or you burn in hell. One or the other. That's the bottom line. Come on now. He calls. Hey, Peter, you, follow me. What? Oh, what about my family? Oh, you, you know, I've got to pay the bill. Follow me. What about you? Tax collector over there, hey? Follow me. Oh, but I'm making heaps of dough. Follow me. That's the way it goes. Hallelujah. Not that, oh, I think I might be a pastor, you know. And everyone will look up to me and I'll wear all the fancy clothes, even though, you know, it's summer and I'll have a 17-piece uh, suit on and, and everyone will do all my dirty work and, you know, they can all, you know, uh, wash my clothes and clean my shoes and they can do everything for me. That's not a pastor. That's a P-A-S-T-A. 
the, not a P-A-S-T-O-R. That's a fettuccine or something like that. Maybe a ravioli. But that's not a pasta. P-A-S-T-O-R. That's not a man of God. Called. 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 Now, I might be a prophet. I might go to prophet school. I might be an evangelist. I might go to evangelist school. No, you won't. Because Ephesians 4, verse 11 says what? Sister Michelle, show our sister where it is. Ephesians 4 and verse 11, as the Spirit leads here today, not as we expect it will be, but as the Spirit leads. Because we expect to be uh, you know, doing things our way, don't we? But the Lord said, no, at an unexpected time I will come. I don't have to inform you when I'm coming. I'll let you know when Jesus is coming. Hey? Uh, Father's going to let Jesus know and then Jesus will come at a time. He don't have to let us know. So Ephesians 4.11 said he gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. How are you going there, Sister Michelle? Is Sister Elisa there? Is she right? She got that one? Yeah. Gifts. 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 It's got to be gifts. Gifts. Not I'm going to be. I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to give up my smoking. I'm going to give up my drinking. Oh, I'm going to give up whoring round. No, you're not. You, you ain't doing nothing, man, because the Lord said he's already done it. Now, you've got to believe, you know what I mean? I had a guy contact me and say, well, look, you know, are you trying to say that my uncle, he was a very good man and he was this and he was that because he kept the Sabbath, he's gone to hell. He's died and he's gone to hell. I said, look, man, I don't say who's going to hell or who's not going to hell. I'm just saying what the scripture says. And the scripture says the most profane and and, uh, abominable sin there is, is unbelief. And if you don't believe that Jesus is your Sabbath, if you don't believe he's your rest, you're in unbelief. You're rendering the works of the cross void. He accomplished all that. He'd done the Sabbath out of, uh, out of town. He just kicked it out. He kicked out the priest. He kicked out every. You don't need to go to no priest. Hey? Eh? You don't need to go to no priest. He kicked that out of town too. Because the veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. And the Holy of Holies was over. And we go straight to Father now. Amen. Hey, come on. You don't have to get a, uh, come to me. You go to Father in Jesus' name. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. And you don't need to do the uh, north, south, east and west thing either. Because that's not of God. I used to do that, you know. And then the gen, ooh, gen reflect. I don't want to go down there because I won't get up. But the thing is, you know, it is all that Roman Catholic garbage. And we know the Church of England uh, is the twisted sister of the Roman Catholic Church, don't we? And everyone said, uh, or, you know, Church of England, Anglican Church, they're all the same. Twisted sister of the Roman Catholic Church. They all got the gold cup and the host. And we read about the gold cup in the book of Revelation, the whore church, don't we? We ain't got no gold cup here. We can't afford it anyway. No, we ain't got no gold cup here. Could Jesus, could Jesus afford a gold cup? Where was he with his gold cup? Come on, man. Jesus never had no gold cup. He never even had a donkey to ride. You know what I mean? He had to go and borrow one. He'd go and borrow that donkey. Oh, what? And then he told Peter to go down to cash converters. He said, sell your sword. What did he say? Buy a fish or something. I don't know. He said, sell, sell your, uh, whatever you have there and, and buy something else. Had to go down and cash it in. Hey? At Mr. Thrifting or whatever it was. We got all this stinking high class religion, but we ain't got no Jesus in this country, I tell you. You got heaps of stinking high class religion full of proud, arrogant sinners. <laughs> it's still going on in this sin. Oh, they're wearing that nice white shirt, but, you know, oh, they're all dressed up there. Oh, hello, yeah. How are you today? Oh, come on, man, let's get real. Let's get down where the rubber meets the road. Let's cast out a few demons, you know, let, let's set a few captives free. Let's see the tears roll, hey? Come on, hallelujah. Tears for being set free from fears. You know, tears for fears. Woo! So, here we are today. I just broke in then on my scripture. We should have went forward, eh? Okay, John 8. 
And we're in verse, uh, if my memory serves me well. Verse 41, you do the deeds of your father. I better still, let me start again in 39, John 8. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, <laughs> I thought Jesus was born of fornication, didn't I? But uh, Jesus said to them, I got, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. You are of your father, the devil. Hallelujah. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of him. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears my words. Therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Hallelujah. And that, that is big. There is so much in there. And we've been looking at benchmarks, haven't we? Hey? Bible benchmarks was our first message. And then we done Bible, uh, done benchmark blessings, then benchmark uh, banquet, then benchmark partakers, and last week benchmark abiders, hey? which was the previous verses in John 8, 31 to 36. And today we're looking at benchmark abiders 2, 2. Hey? And we can, this is proof. The scriptures we just read are proof that we can either abide in the vine and walk with Jesus or we're going to go with the devil and be a child of the devil. This is the proof. There are children of the devil. And who are the children of the devil? Let me tell you, they're the children that don't walk on the straight road. They don't walk... Look. I know people get upset when you say this. I've heard the Pope say, Oh, well, there's no... You can't be a child of the devil. You can't be a, a, a son of the devil. Because they don't want people to know they are. Right? Who is a son of the devil? Who, who is a child of the devil? The Bible tells us liars. 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 Because the devil is a liar. Let's read it ourselves. Praise God. 44, John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. You see that? You can be a son and or a daughter of the devil. Right? This is a warning. This is, a, this is a, a benchmark. These are benchmark scriptures. Like These are gauges. That when you look at your petrol tank and you oh, I'm nearly on empty. I better fill up my tank. Or you say, oh, I'm nearly on empty. I'll keep driving. <laughs> As if you've got faith. <laughs> I've done that a couple of times out west. You know. <laughs> Sailed into someone's property and they, they gave me some motor mole fuel. They, they didn't have anything else. Well, they didn't give me anything else. They didn't want to siphon their car. And so I went, oh, yeah, here you go, mate. I said, I'm just travelling around preaching the gospel, you know. I run out of fuel. Oh, I've got a, got a, a tin of uh, motor mile fuel there if you want it. It's four stroke. I said, well, whatever. You know, and I just put that uh, tin of fuel in. Come on. I put that tin of fuel in and then it, I got to uh, the front gate of my home uh, and just coasted into the front yard. How's that? That's, the, that's by phone. But when you look at the gauge, see, these are gauges. 
They, these are warning signs. They, these are standards. These are, these are um, what would you say? These are uh, uh, examples that we're reading here today. Measurements. We can measure things by. Am I, ask yourself, am I a child of the devil? Or am I a child of God? You know, you have that witness if you're a, a serial liar like Donald Trump. I mean, he'd have to be a child of the devil, wouldn't he? You see the way that guy gets around and what he does? You know what I mean? And the way he just, he's just a serial liar. He just lies and lies. You know what I mean? He's thinking about himself. He's stacking it all up for him, preparing himself all the time. So, you are of your father, the devil, verse 44, John. 844. You're of your father, the devil, and the, de- and the desires of your father you want to do. You see, you've got church people saying, oh, the things you know, I don't want to do, I do. And the things I want to do, I can't do. You know what I mean? The things I don't want to do, I do. And the things, well, that was Paul when he was the child of the devil. That was when he was Saul. <laughs> you with me? And then he became Paul. Saul became Paul and he was struck down on the Damascus road. The Lord come to a place, he could do nothing else except strike him down on the Damascus road. And he just knocked him clean off his horse. You ever been on a horse and fallen off a horse? I have. I've been going along just in a bit of a trot and just fell off the horse, bounced a bit too high bareback and hit the ground. It's a, it's a long way to fall off a horse, you know what I mean? Especially if you're not a rodeo rider, and I'm not. <laughs> and bang. But Paul, he was knocked off his horse. The Lord struck him. And sometimes it's a big shock, you know, bull. Oh, what's going on? Who is this bloke? What's he saying? You know, to get out of the devil's children road into the child of God road, going from the wide road to the narrow road. Hallelujah. And narrow road says restrictions, you know, culling. You know, when you cull things, you know, you got you got all this garbage furniture at home, you know, I hate that. All this stuff piling up. My grandmother, she used to hoard this stuff. And you can't move, you know, it's all like, you can't move. She's got chairs, she's got pianos, she's got this, she's got dolls sitting on beds, she got and you're trying to move oh, how you going there later? You know? Get rid of it, it's useless, it's of no use. Sell it to someone, give it away, do something with it. But cull, cut down, run lean. Run fast in the Lord. You have a look at the disciples of old. Have a look at the way they lived. Have a look at the way they walked. They were down to their sandals and even apart, the Lord said, don't bring any sandals this time. Whoa, come on, no money bag, you know. (laughs) This is what real discipleship's about. See, we don't call ourselves Christians here. We don't call ourselves Christians because that word Christian has got such a stinking name. It's associated with pedophiles. It's associated with thieves. It's associated with basically gangsters in America ripping people off on TV. I'll give you, you know, this snake oil and this holy oil we got from America, I should say, got from Israel, and we're going to get this oil, and you're going to put it on your head. There's no such thing in the Bible, in the New Testament, as holy oil. I can tell you. There's oil, and the Holy Ghost is the emblem, you know, oil is the emblem of the Holy Ghost. No such thing as holy oil in the New Testament. There is oil. There is olive oil. The Bible says when you've got a sick person, and you're going to pray, anoint them with oil. Anoint them with oil and pray. Lay your hand on them and pray. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. But didn't say, oh, anoint them with holy oil. No, it says anoint them with oil. Amen. Amen. It's only an emblem. It's like the emblems we're going to take today. The body 
and the blood of Jesus. They're only emblems. There's no transubstantiation here. We don't like the Roman Catholics, oh, it's turning into, you know, the, uh, Jesus bodily, you know, the Eucharist. Where is that in the scripture? It ain't there. See the shock? Horror. Shock. Oh, where have you been all my life? And I, no, where have I been all my life? I've been hoodwinked by stinking religion. Stinking religion building their sandstone castles like uh, Notre Dame. Right? Billions of dollars wasted and there's children dying in the third world, dying skin and bone hungry and they're building a stinking rotten building out of sandstone and employing so-called specialists to do it, to build some stinking rotten religious building again with no Jesus in it. And everyone said, hallelujah, hallelujah. Even in France itself, stinking rotten sinful place it is. Even in France, you've got these people on the streets, they're starving. The bulldoze, the Notre Dame, bulldoze the thing and put up a, a, a food shop for the needy. Put up a place where people can eat, eat food. Free of charge. That's where you spend your billions and then the Lord can bless the place. And as they come through the door, you tell them, because you love them, you're a sinner on your way to hell. You need to repent. You need to ask Jesus to forgive you so you'll be spared from the fires of eternal hell. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. We either want the truth or we want to tiptoe through the tulips, you know. Oh, well, you know, I don't mind that preacher, but he's, you know, he, he, he's just like a little bit too full on for me. You know what I mean? Hey, too full on, I'm just on. You know, I just switched on to the Lord. He's a little bit too full on for me, you know. Like, you know, he, I think he's like sort of running the cult, you know. Well, that's what the hypocrite religious people said of Jesus. He's running the cult. Huh? But they just called it the sect, S-E-C-T of the Nazarene, you know. They called him some sort of freak, huh? They said he was super freaky, wow, huh? He was just some super freak, you know. And, he, you know, they couldn't handle it because he's healing them. He's casting out demons. He, he, he's down there proclaiming the word and there's people manifesting everywhere. And they said, we've got to get rid of this Jesus, you know. He's going to bring us undone. He's going to expose us for what we are, religious hypocrites. And that's what he's doing here. Because this is our, 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 our benchmark, abiders too, right? It ex- benchmarks expose instantly. The other stuff... It takes a little while. You know, there, there's a little bit of depth there to get into. But these are punchline, benchmark messages. And it just exposes all the rubbish that we have. And everyone said, exposes all the rubbish in the world, in religion, and in the churches. And that's the message of a true prophet. Just exposing, exposing. A true prophet has no respect in his own country or in his own home or anywhere he goes. John 4, 44. Open up, please, and have a look. Then you know you're sitting under a true prophet. If your pastor is Mr. Fancy Legs, if your pastor is Mr. Fancy Pants and everyone loves him, he ain't no prophet. I can tell you, he's just a P-R-O-F-I-T. Come on. True prophets are hated. They're hated. They're despised. True prophets are stoned to death. Go and ask the church leaders. Go and ask the fancy pants pastors. Have you been stoned? I have. I was stoned in Roman Street. Outside, outside police headquarters. She's laughing because she's rejoicing. Sister... Sister Lisa, man, she just, you know, rocked out of the socks here today. She just said, oh, man, this is real church. Woo! Woo! Jesus, son of David. Oh! Have mercy on 
me. Ow! Glory! Ow! You know, this is real deal, real deal church. Not some nose in the air, <laughs> nose in the air. Oh, dearly beloved, we're here today to collect your money and to make sure you're continuing on the road of deception to hell. You know what I mean? Ugh. North, south, east and west. You know what I mean? And off you go, Charlie Brown. It's okay, you know, we condemn the nose in, in our church. We don't judge because we don't love anyone. <laughs> you see someone going astray, you see them doing the wrong thing and you don't tell them, you don't love them. You don't love them. You're just saving your own hide. You just want to, oh, I might lose them as my friend. Well, you could very well be instrumental in saving their soul from hell, I'm telling them. Oh, but I love them too much to tell them they're on their way to hell. Well, are they? (laughs) Don't ask me. Go to the scriptures. What do the scriptures say? That's what we're about here. That's what I've been about for 32 years. Who would dream about it? You know, if you could say, give me another name for the Bible, I would say, uh, sober. <laughs> sober. <laughs> you know, Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, I went there once before I come to Jesus and I was sitting there and I... And all these guys are coming out the front. You know, My name's Bill Brown, and I'm an alcoholic. And that was it. And he went and sat down. Then this guy got up and said, "Oh, my name's uh, you know Johnny Cash, and uh, I'm in Folsom Prison. No, I, my name's uh, you know Harry Johnson, and I'm a drug addict. And, all right, and sit down. Next, well, I got up and I said, "Well, my name's uh, Paul Sheehan, and." I don't want to keep going on this, I am, I am. You know, I come here to get a solution and you clowns don't have it. See you later. <laughs> and I just walked out. <laughs> Everyone went, yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, I'll go the next step. You know what I mean? The Lord let me go down the Salvation Army. Here I am in Red Hill, you know. Yeah, baby. We got this this time, man. And I'm in Red Hill and nice, oh, look at those nice hotel sheets. You know, woo. Nice and fresh and good meals too. I started to put on a bit of weight. And then three months later, you know, it took all my doll money off me and they made a quid. And then I said, we're going to let you go now. We're going to let you out of here. And they just sort of, it was just like a wild bull coming out of the tubes. You know, woo! I'm straight down the norm of me five ways. <laughs> and I was down there in the valley, you know, Red Hill there. <coughs> uh, what is it called? Pindari, you know, they didn't pin, pin my situation at all. And I'm down there, <laughs> I'm hanging for a beer, and I'm down there, gnawing me five ways. <laughs> Three hours later, hey, yeah, shut up. In the spit tray. Hey? Well, the old salvation never told me I had to repent and be born again and abide in the Word. And it wasn't long after that, or some years later, or whatever it was, I ran into an Aboriginal. He's up in Rocky there, eh? And he said, hey, brother, he said, you're you're a sinner, eh? You're on your way to hell. I said, yeah, that's exactly right. (laughs) You're about the only one that loves me. Tell me the truth. And he prayed for me. He prayed, cut a long story short, he prayed with me. Just like I prayed with Sister Elisa this morning. And man, it was like like someone had just filled me, sprayed me with eggs and mold, you know, inside. I just felt so clean, you know. And then as soon as I said, forgive me, uh, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. I acknowledged him as Lord and I, I acknowledged I was a sinner and I asked for forgiveness. I asked him to come into my life and into my inner man and heart. The, the spirit just moved. And I started, as the Bible says, speaking with another tongue. I was speaking with another tongue. The power of the Holy Ghost hit me so hard. And he said, 
And we had that song about that down across the court. He had a, and a, whoa, what's going on? This power just went through me. Went, shh. And then he said, hey, brother, the, the Lord, he hungry for you, eh? And then I'm going to baptize you now, eh? You remember John the Baptist, eh? He baptized Jesus, remember that? He said, go under the water, eh? You know, those who believe and are baptized, eh? We go in the water now and said, got me, man. There is no six-month course of water baptism. This is what happens. You know, no, by faith, see? We receive everything by faith. We're here today by faith. I'm here by faith. I come here by faith. I didn't come here by, uh, uh, because there's 6,000 people come here and they're going to give me 100 bucks each. <laughs> I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't come here for any other reason except to preach and to teach and to, and to be with my brothers and sisters who believe in the, the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, who said there is a heaven and there is a hell and there is a judgment day. And he said that those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be burnt forever in the lake of fire. F- flaming fire, can someone say. Total destruction. You can read it if you want to, uh, Sister Michelle. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. You can show my dear sister there. We just start her off in these baby scriptures. <laughs> just the light stuff, you know, to start off with. I'd like to just start with that light stuff, you know. Woo! I reckon most church goers would have never even read Second Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9 because their pastors never told them to read it because it's just a little bit too scary, you know. Oh, because my grandmother, you know, she doesn't know God because she spent all her life living for herself and she doesn't know God and it'd be shame for, for me to know she's going to burn in hell forever. Everyone said? Amen. Oh, I might be the one that... Uh, in. in, in Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. I might be the one that, you know, who does not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, oh, we don't want to look at that, you know. Oh, we just go, go over here to Psalm 23. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's all I like. Yeah. But we don't want to look at that, do we? We don't look at Second Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. That's two sides of the coin there. You got the unbeliever outright, never even bothered to know God, just spent their life on for themselves. Enjoyed all that food and that drink. Enjoyed all those nice cars, you know. Those lovely days on the beach, praising their children and family and glorifying them. And never praising Jesus and never glorifying him once. The Lord said, I'll take vengeance on you with flame and fire. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, I don't want to hear that because I don't believe. Well, that's even worse. That's the worst sin there is. That's above pedophilia. That's above homosexuality. That's above murder and above rape. Unbelief is abominable. We know what God done to those who didn't believe in the wilderness. He sent fiery serpents. The Bible doesn't say snakes. It says fiery serpents. They're just like lightning, smacking them in the face, biting them everywhere. And they go to move away and they step on one. They couldn't move an inch. And 3,000 fell in one hit. Uh, uh, just like bullets fired at them. But they were snakes biting them. Because of unbelief, they did not believe. Oh, well, don't tell the people that. They won't come back to your church. Look, I'm not here to stuff sardines in a tin. I'm here to preach the truth and to cut the sermon free so they can swim in the fresh waters. And everyone said, and amen, our message today, benchmark, benchmark abiders. Two, two. The other side of the coin, isn't it? Last week we had the going free. If the Son of God has set you free, you're going to be free. You know, they said of me 32 years ago, oh yeah, you wait and see. 
You know, he's all fired up and that. Give him a couple of months. You know, some cut me a bit of slack. They said, oh, he'll last about 12 months and then he'll be back on the grog. You wait and see. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Let me tell you, you weren't born an alcoholic. You weren't born a homosexual. You, you weren't born a drug addict. You weren't born, born a thief or an ice user. The Bible says clearly in the writings of Genesis that God made men and women in his, his image and he ain't no drunk and he ain't no loser druggie. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. He made you. He made you in his image. And I tell you what, he's got a powerful image. Eh? He's got a powerful record, our Lord Jesus. He knows what he's doing. And listen, if we're prepared to listen, eh? if we're prepared to listen to him and then lay hold of, eh? as the writings of James, it says clearly, be quick to listen. Be slow to anger. Eh? Be slow to speak. That is the Holy Ghost waltz. Quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow. Da, 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 slow to anger. Da, 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 da. Quick to listen. Da, 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 da. Ba, ba, de, 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 de. Slow to speak. Hold your tongue, stupid. Da, 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 da. Wait till you're smoking to now. Go on. Da, 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 da. Uh, hold your tongue and no one will even know that you're stupid. Da, 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 Soon we open our mouth, we expose ourselves, don't we? Whether we're stupid, whether we're, as the Bible says, wise or fool. You know? The fool hears the word and goes, yeah. But they go away and they don't do it. The wise man hears the word and goes, yeah, and goes away and does it. See? And that ain't easy. The doing it is not easy. You know? Like you can dream about, uh, you can dream or, or, or think about or, or, or wish, wish, wish. You can think about it and, and, and you can intend Intend to clean the house and scrub all the walls, but that's easy. And when you go to do it, whoa, I did not know it was such a big job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, James the Apostle says, Be ye a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Lest you deceive yourself. The devil doesn't even have to hit you. He doesn't even have to come after you. You're self-deceived. Because you're a hearer and not a doer. And everyone said amen. amen. Our message today. Benchmark abiders two. It's a warning. It's a real warning thing. You know, it, these measurements. We're going by them. Always go by the measurements of the Bible. Perfect. It's the golden rule. Hey? The new covenant. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. Two golden rules any fool can take away and use. Amen. If you love your neighbour, come on. If you really do love your neighbour, you will be one who loves Jesus more than anyone. Your wife, your children, your husband. The whole scene. I'm telling you, look, the Lord Jesus is very clear. The ways of men seem right in their own mind, but the way leads to destruction. The way, we, we know we think we're really smart until the Lord chops us down. We read in the Old Testament of King Nebuchadnezzar, don't we? King, king, this guy wasn't on the doll. Someone say amen. amen. He was king. And God gave him a huge, huge kingdom. And then he got a bit proud. And he's smiling to himself there, you know. Yeah, baby, I got all this sorted, man. And then the Lord just said, I'm going to cut you down. 
real quick. And what happened to him? Nebuchadnezzar, he's on all fours eating grass. And then he started to grow hair like an oxen. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, that'd be different if you're on ice, wouldn't it? If you were sort of like on ice and that happened to you, 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 you know. I remember when I used to take mushrooms, you know, I'd have blue beanie suit, you know what I mean? <laughs> or gold top, gold top uh, um, stew. And I, I, I felt like an oxen, you know what I mean? I, I felt like I was some sort of freaky thing, you know? And all the, I thought all these things were crawling over me. And... One time I thought I was uh, one of the characters out of Sesame Street. They say, you still are, man. No. Nah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I felt really, like, terrible. But for a king in such greatness to be brought so low to the dirt and to eat grass in the field and grow hair. That's what the Lord does to the proud. He said, he gives nothing to the proud. In the writings, I'm pretty sure it's Peter. He gives nothing to the proud. There's no grace for the proud, but only for the humble. You know, it's a humbling thing to sit under the message of a prophet. Very humbling. <laughs> you know why? Because God has humbled his prophets first. And then he's cleaned out all the gunk. And then he can bring the message without fear of anything. Just pure Holy Ghost anointed punchline, benchmark, ultimatums and absolutes. And everyone said, and amen and amen. So here we are. Look, <laughs> we're going to have another series on part three of, you know, part six today. When the word comes, it comes like a river. You know, remember the old song? There's a river of life flowing out from me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captive free. There's a river of life flowing out from me. See? Oh, we got that kind of... There's a river of life flowing out. Rivers of living water will flow out of your bosom. The Word of God. Hey? Isn't that beautiful? That you can refresh the people. And they can say, Oh, you make me feel brand new. And they sing to the Lord and say, Oh, Jesus, how wonderful. I experienced, I experienced your presence today. And they can tell others. As it says in Revelation chapter 22, 17. Read it if you like. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and the Bride, the Church, says, come and drink of the waters of life. Freely. <laughs> and those who come, tell others to come. And Sister... Uh, Sister Elisa will be able to go away and say, Come and drink of the waters of life freely. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Because that's what I did when the Aboriginal told me I'd started 32 years ago. 32 years ago I started. He said, But you didn't go to Bible college. Oh, but you didn't, you know, where's, where's your certificate? Oh, you, you, you're not a priest. Did you know that everyone here is a priest and a king unto God who have received Jesus? That's scripture. Spiritual priests and kings unto God. Revelation chapter 1 and the verses. Eight, I'm pretty sure. Yes, let's see if I'm right. Revelation chapter 1. 
How great thou art. Now it's six. I always get those two mixed up. Six. And he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory. Make sure you lock that. Uh, he has made us kings and priests. To his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You see that? Revelation 1, verse 6. He done that with his blood. I don't want you to know that. Religious hypocrites don't want you to know that. The Roman Catholic Church, they don't want you to know that. Revelation chapter 1, sister. Revelation 1, 6. Because then you, they're not the big uh, queen bee. They don't want you to know that you're someone in Christ. Outside of Christ, you're nobody. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how muscly you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care if you've got an hourglass body or a body like a blob. It doesn't matter. You're nobody. You say, but oh, I own 16 houses. And, and I, I got them by thieving. <laughs> and lying to people and ripping them off. My portfolio says liar. <laughs> You're nothing without Jesus. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I tell you what, I'd be in despair today without him. Without him, life's not worth living. I'm like a ship without a sail. Just going anywhere. Oh Jesus, oh my Jesus, do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh Jesus, my sweet Jesus, to know him, oh hallelujah. Without him, how lost I would be. Here we are, look. John 8 and the verse is. Now we're going to start the message. I hope everyone's primed and ready to go. <laughs> John, John 8 and the verse is 37. I know. I know that you are Abraham's descendants. But you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. You're listening. My word has no place in you. You listening? You know, when people come again... I've been on streets for 32 years. Don't tell me about evangelising. I've evangelised in the biblical way. I've gone from town to town like the littlest hobo, you know. <laughs> hey, you're telling your age now, you know. <laughs> uh, I've gone from town to town, you know. Like, and uh, with nothing in my pocket, just trusting in the Lord, you know. I've got ten bucks left, I either buy something to eat, and or I put juice in my ute. Which is it going to be? I've got a trunk, a huge trunk in the back full of my literature and Bibles. What am I going to do, Lord? You're the one that sent me out here. I had nothing to do with it. He said, put the money in the tank. Well, what am I going to do for food? Just chill. And I'm up there in Maribor. I walked in the place. You know, I'm thinking, whoa. You know? A couple of times in Maribor, the Lord's blessed me. The guy has waived the feed, you know. You pay later. That's all right, sort it out later. Hey? And when later comes, uh, the Lord says, in between that time, in between scoffing and chugging it down and paying for it, the Lord says, get a brochure and put it on the table. So I get the brochure and put it on the table. The guy comes back to pick up the plate. Oh, he's seen the brochure. He didn't touch the brochure. Went back to the counter and went over and I said, oh, how much is that? He said, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There's faith for you in action. I'm down in Gundawindi where the old Gundawindi grave was. Oh, we haven't got to sleep tonight. Got nothing to eat. The Lord said, go down to Vinnie's. They owe me a lot. <laughs> so I went down there and he said, oh, what's happening? I know where to live. All right, there's a bed. 
You can stay here tonight. Next minute, a few blokes there gravitate to me. Oh, I've got a tin of beans here if you like. Yeah, I've got some of that. Would you like a bottle of Coke? Yeah, why not? You know? And then I led two blokes to the Lord and then one wanted to come with me. I said, nah, you testify here in Gundawindi. And next minute, the next day I'm preaching on the street and he come walking down off the highway. <laughs> down into the main street of Gund- uh, of uh, I left Gundawini and went to Mar- uh, Marbo. No, Marbo? No. What's that other place near Gundawini? Uh, oh. It's an Aboriginal place, hangout. But anyway, I'm in the street preaching. He came walking down the main street. There you are! I said, oh no. I said, I told you what to do, man. Oh, come on, man, I'll come with you. I said, you won't last the line, man. Just stay here. Stay in the district. Stay in the district. Tell them what the Lord done for you. He said, oh man, this is so awesome, you know. This is just unbelievable. How he got there, I don't know. He probably hitched. But by faith, by faith. John 8, 37, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. You see that? He knew. You know what I mean? He knew that these people were religious he said but it's because you're religious you want to kill me you, you want to finish me off and like I said I've been on streets for 32 years and people just hate me but they say oh, I go to church but you're this and you're that I said no it's because you have no room in you for the truth the, the word has no place in you because you don't want to let go of your stinking religion, lies, and sin to receive Jesus. And everyone said, it, we, we can't hang on to the both bags. It gets very heavy, you know what I mean? <laughs> it gets very heavy. Just let go of one bag and just swing that bag of scriptures over your back and go on. Right? Let go of your sin. We, if, he's done the job. He's delivered you. The Lord said that it's finished. All has been accomplished. That's what he said on the tree. Let's go to John 19, please. John 19. John 19. All these benchmarks. John 19. And the verse is... 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all, all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his hip, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished! And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. After he had received the sour wine. You with me? See, things are going to turn sour and then you're going to say it's finished. Everything turns sour and goes south and then you say, I'm finished with that now. Hallelujah, it is finished. Oh, everything starts to curdle when you make a decision and say, I've made a promise, hallelujah. To follow Jesus. I made, I made a promise to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and glory before me. No turning back. No turning back. Because John, or should I say Luke 9, 62 says, those who even look back, those who even look backwards are not fit for the kingdom of God. And we do remember Lot's wife, when they were about to escape, and Lot and his two daughters and his wife were fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah, and the wife look back because they were beautiful cities it was a lot of shopping to be done and a lot of bling in the windows 
And she looked back and bam! Instantly she was turned into a pillar of salt so that McDonald's could use her on their burgers. More salt than ever. Hallelujah. But just like that, bang, bang. And that scripture is preserved for us today as salt preserves. And it, that scripture is preserved for decades and centuries. It has been there for us to, me, to measure things by, to, 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 to uh, have as a benchmark. As a gauge, as a standard. This is our standard of living. And you say, wow, it's pretty hard to live up to that. No, no, it's, it's hard for you. But it's not hard for those who follow Jesus. Those who love Jesus, you know, love makes everything easy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like I see women dealing with issues and I think, wow. You know, they've got all sorts of issues and, 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 and uh, carry on going on. But they love that child or they love that, that um, uh, whatever they're, they're doing. See, love makes things easy. But if you're going to be just a grinder... Just a, a white knuckle religious grinder, you know, and just, oh, I'll do it, you know, if I have to, you know. I just don't want to go to hell. Well, that's where you're going to end up because you don't love Jesus. You don't love Jesus. See, when you love Jesus, it makes things easy. You know, people just talk to you like dirt, they spit on you. I've had a, the homos down in the valley. I used to preach there for four years, early in the morning. And you get nightclubbers and homos and they're spitting in your face and, and they're touching you up, you know, and all sorts of things. Trying to get you moving, you know. They want me to lash out and crack on one, you know. Now I just, hey, chill, man. You know? I just tell them the story of Jesus on the cross. I said he could have wiped the whole lot of them out just if he just spat on the ground. There would have been an earthquake that just destroyed the world. But he didn't, did he? He hung there, he put his hands up and said, do what you want. Do what you want with me, man. But I'm going to rise above it all, hallelujah, from the dead. And we can say the same. We can say the same. When they spit on you and poke you and jab you and stone you. And the guy that stoned me early hours of the morning, the Lord said, I want you to preach outside police headquarters for four years. I want you to be on the street at four o'clock in the morning. Think about it. Four o'clock in the morning. Winter. For four years. Right? Come on. On your pat and alone. As prophets operate. Can someone say amen? Yeah. Four square gospel. Four o'clock in the morning for four years. <laughs> and the grand finish of the whole season of four years. Queensland University graduates come along and had to do a thesis and they'd done a movie on me uh, uh, like a little um, a doco beautiful doco it didn't cost me a cent and that was my exit uh, after I got me doco the Lord said that's it now move on he just rewarded me with a documentary on, on me on the stream and you can see it on the YouTube and, and it's touched the hearts of tens of thousands of people you know what I mean you say, but it's only got so many 5,000 hits. You say, well, who did they take it to? Who did they tell about it? You're listening. It's a big world out there. And so I was there one morning and they, they took the, this guy took the creek stones, drunk, and creek stones are about as big as your little fingernail and just gets pelting them at me. Boom, boom, just kept pelting them at me. It was like, just like uh, being peppered. You know, with with buckshot. Just, uh, I'll take that. 
you effing this. And you, uh, hey, man, I just kept preaching. Right? That God so loved the world. <laughs> he gave his only son for those who, who stoned him. And, you know, I just preaching that I'm here today to, to uh, be instrumental in helping you escape the fires of hell. Ah, there is no hell. Ah, come on. By faith. By faith. Because I believe in the benchmark. Because I, I'm not a child of the devil. I'm a child of God. I have the witness of the Spirit in me. I will go anywhere. I will give my life for the Lord. No problem. I'm not given anything if I give my life. It's nothing compared to what he's done for me. Can someone say amen? So there you go. Just a few examples. You know, it's a lifestyle. It's not a visitation. We don't visit the Lord on Sunday. We live with him. We talk with him. We walk with him every day. And no matter what the problem or where we are, we can go aside and say, Jesus, this is too much for me. I can't carry this. He'll say, well, give it here. I told you to come to me, didn't I? Come unto me, ye who labour and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. And everyone said, Amen. My burden is light and my yoke is easy. How can his burden be light and his yoke easy? Have you ever read these scriptures? Man alive. You talk about burden is light and yoke is easy. How can that be? Because you have the Holy Spirit. We have the greatest power in the world dwelling in us. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit. That same spirit moving through Elijah and Elijah and said to the son, be said to the son, be still. Said to the son. The same spirit. The spirit of God. Who touched the lepers and they were healed. He turned the water into wine. The same spirit. The Spirit of God. He turned the water into wine. He turned the water into wine. With a little bit of fish and bread. The multitudes were fed. He turned the water into wine. He can do anything. He said, oh, you've been broke, Jesus. He said, no, I'm just going down to get a fish. And he said, fish, come in. And grabbed it and he took out a hundred bucks out of the fish's mouth. He said, there's your tax money. (laughs) Jesus took money out of fish's mouth. Now you think about that. Something fishy about that, they reckon. I said, no, there ain't. That's the way the scripture says it. Woo! Glory. And there's plenty more fish in the sea, isn't there? So there's more dough there to be had. I know that you are Abraham's descendant. See, we can be... You know, I get that all the time on the street. People say, oh, I, 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 I was born a Christian, you know. I was raised up a Christian. So, yeah, I believe you, but <laughs> you weren't born a disciple of Jesus, man. And you weren't raised up a disciple of Jesus. You were born a, some religious thing. I belong to the uh, Roman Catholic Church. I belong to the Assembly of God. I know you do. I can tell. You're living in sin. I belong to Jesus, man. I don't belong to no building. Can someone say amen? amen. He paid the price. He said it's finished. Hey? Everything turns pear-shaped and sour. And then it's finished, isn't it? Hey? You know what it's like? You do, you do a really hard day's work, you know? It's been a hard day's night and I've been working like a dog. And then when it's all finished, you sit back and you say, it's finished. Amen? Amen. Now that's finished. And you say, back, whoa, have something nice to eat and drink and just relax. And you look back and you have a look at the work you've done. You know? yeah. As I said to Hannah the other day, it's all us, Hannah. It's all us. She said, a bit more me. No. <laughs> it's all us. It's all us, Shadrach. She said, yeah, a bit more of me in there. Ooh. And you sit back and see the product. I look back all the time, you know. And I, I look at my, my past. You know, motorcycles and Jackie House singlets and tight jeans and desert boots and cursed and swearing bagger, gun in my back pocket and a bagger, uh, drum or white ox in the other pocket, you know, and a couple of acid tabs in my fog pocket, all that sort of thing. I think, look at me now. Hey? 
Oh man, it's just a, it, it's just a total new creation. Because I went through the sour times. <laughs> I went through and, and bit the bullet, you know. That's it. And there's so many people out there. They're trying to give up smoking. They're trying to give up drinking. They're trying to give this up. So you're just mocking God, man, because Jesus done the job at the cross. He, that's what he was hanging there for. For all that stuff. All your sin, every single bit of it, he gave his life, a propitiation for your sins. It's all done. All you've got to do is follow him. Just follow him, you know what I mean? All the way. And you'll be free. And, and things, you, you think, oh, beautiful when you receive the Lord. I tell you what, when you get down the road, it gets more beautiful by the day. It, life gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what love between my Lord and I. I can't help falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Eh? As the days go by. Oh, what joy between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Benchmark, benchmark, abiders too. We've got to abide, we've got to live there. No good going there on a Sunday. Oh, I heard the word Sunday, then you wait till the next Sunday. And in between Sunday to Sunday, the devil's come in. You know, the moment you leave these doors today, the devil's going to come. The Bible talks about like a bird of prey, and he's going to pluck. You're going to try and pluck the seed from your head, from your heart, from your mind. You're going to try and steal that seed. So you say, ah, I don't believe in that. <laughs> That's for old ladies and children. Oh, I'm a big tough man. You know what I mean? I'm an ex-boxer. <laughs> well, or, no, not that boxer. But... <laughs> I'm a games player, man. Really? <laughs> That's why you're turning vegetable, you know? That's why you keep turning Japanese. And so, with the Lord Jesus, we got it all. And we've got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Angels and brethren in the Word of God, we got it all. So let's press on. Amen? Amen. We're going to have to continue this. We're going to have to go through again with a, with a uh, benchmark's third part. Benchmark abiders three. What do you reckon about that? And just see what, uh, see what Father will do there. But look, let's just finish this off in John 8, 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Did you know what the word says? Do you see Jesus here? He's talking about he, my word has no place in you. See, he picked that up. The moment uh, they believed in verse 36, uh, I should say verse 30, he spoke these words, many believed. And then we jump down to where in 31, we just read 30, now 31. Jesus tells them then you've got to abide. See, that's when you... People believe, but when you tell them that, that they have to abide and live there and stay there to go free, that's when they come up with all their excuses. Oh, but, you know, we're the descendants of Abraham. That don't make you jack. That don't make you nothing. Oh, my grandfather built churches. That don't make you jack. You're not free. Where did you go free when, you, when your grandpa started building churches? Where did you go free when your mother started making doilies for, for the what have you? No. Where, oh, but we're descendants of Abraham. I know, Jesus said, I know you are Abraham's descendants. But they're not Abraham, are they? <laughs> they're descendants. 
You know, I've got descendants. I've got a son and a daughter here. And you know what? People can, when I die and I'm gone, they're going to say, gee, you're not, they're either going to say, you're just like your old man. You're just like your dad. He was like that. Or they're going to say, you're nothing like your dad. Can someone say amen? Amen. And, they say, well, and they'll turn around and say, oh, we're descendants of, of Pastor Paul. And you'll say, that doesn't mean Jack. <laughs> you're not like him. Because look at this. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in it. You know when the word of God, listen to me, when the word of God is in someone, let's say there's Bill and Mary, and the word of God's in, in, in Mary, and Bill comes along, and Mary starts talking about what's in her, which is the word of God, and Bill gets angry. The word's not... He, he, he doesn't have no room for the word. He's not of, of the word. He's not of the Lord. So there's going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict. You say, well, don't be so divisive. I'm going to finish up by showing you a scripture that we've all looked at and we're going to look at it again in the writings of Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. And the verse is 34. And we're going to finish then. Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a... But a sword. A sword. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Word. The Word of God. Is this the right there? The Word of God. Matthew 10, 35. Let's go there now. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. What? That's not fair. Who said? You. What would you know about fair? You wouldn't know anything. Jesus knows everything. He's omniscient. And then verse 36. And a man's foes will be those of his own house. His enemies will be of his own house. Why? Because one has room for the word and the other doesn't have room for the word. But if you've got two people in a house and they both have room in their heart for this word, there ain't going to be no trouble. They're going to be sweet hallelujahs in the sweet corns. Now, let's go. Verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy. Can someone say amen? Amen. Oh, that's too hard. No, it's not. Nothing's too hard when you have the Holy Ghost. Nothing's too hard when you love Jesus. Love makes everything easy. You know what? There's things I do for my children. Well, I say children. (coughs) My son and daughter. I don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it. But I do it because I love them. You with me? I mean, what I'm saying is, I do want to do it, but I don't want to do it because it, it taxes my body. And it taxes my time. But because I love them, I go the extra mile and do it. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't have to do it. The things that I do, I don't really, they're just extras. But I do it because I love them. And the same with other people, not my own family. I do things for other people that, because I love them. Because my, the empathy that the Lord put in me says, do it for them. Go on. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I collect plastic bottles for an old man that digs in the bin. You know what I mean? Because I love. I don't know him, but I love him. His name is Abraham. He comes from, from Bosnia, you know? I say, Abraham, Abraham from Bosnia, what you doing? 
I have a bag, big black garbage bag full of bottles. Am I praising myself? No, I'm trying to explain about love. Love goes the extra mile. You know what I mean? Can I get uh, $10 off your... Here's 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone say amen. amen. Can I borrow some money off you? I don't lend money. Sorry. <laughs> I give it or I don't. You know, that sort of attitude. We've got to take that sort of attitude. We've got to have that... Hey, I've got everything and more. You've you, you got golden streets to look forward to. You've you got a place called heaven. I believe that. But I don't want the place called hell. I, 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 want, I want my worst enemies to go to hell. I want them to go to heaven. Everyone said, Amen. I give you all the glory, Jesus. Amen.